start recording and we'll go live now. So uh, welcome everyone to the All For One, One For All community. And tonight uh, we're excited because we've finally got someone else presenting for the first time. Uh, so welcome, Natasha Denman. Thank you. I'm just seeing if we're live, like I wanted to confirm for you. Yeah, yeah. Something, something's happening, but yeah. Anyway, I'm here. <laughs> It's always delayed too. So yeah. um, anyway, we're excited about tonight's topic. It is all about uh, 1,000 days to a million dollar coaching business. And um, Natasha is not just talking about it. She's lived it. She's done it. She's written 100 books about it. Uh, she's <laughs> the ultimate 48-hour author. And um, over to you, Nat. We'll chime in if yeah. we've got questions but we'd uh, yeah. love, love to hear your um tips for the next yeah. thousand days i'm ready to get started awesome guys thank you for having me tonight and feel free also to use the chat box on zoom because i've got that open if you want to sort of make comments rather than coming off uh, mute but feel free to come off mute as well and i know jerry's gonna follow the comments from facebook um on the feed as well if there's any questions uh before, during or after, I'll get back to people as well. So, yes, um, I said yes to this because it happens to be a, quite a couple of weeks here at, um, at our end because we travel a lot. We do a lot of um, tours, international, national. And um, a little while ago, about five years ago, I was saying to Jerry, I, I wrote the book on the thousand days to a million dollar coaching business from home. And when I was thinking about what I was going to talk about today, and I often um, come up with my content in like two hours before I'm meant to do it, even though I know what I'm going to talk about, but I kind of want to keep it fresh. So it's like the latest information. And as much as the stuff that I shared in the, in the book was written like five years ago of what I did in those first 1000 days to build the uh, million dollar coaching business from home, I thought, you know, what would I say to people now? if I was to say, what are the most important things to do? And the three key takeaways that I really want you guys to get from tonight, which were promised in my little spiel as to what I was gonna talk about is to talk about the infrastructure of a seven figure business and what it means and how long it takes and um, why it takes time and effort to actually create it. And it's not like a, you know, six months to seven figures or, you know, how most people kind of think that they can um, create something as big as that, you know, in their first year. Um, then I'm gonna talk about marketing to keep your sales pipeline full, um, and then some sales mastery insider tactics, because I think um, sales and, mar uh, and marketing are the two biggest drivers of any business, um, but also then the infrastructure. So in order to do marketing and sales, you have to build the infrastructure to build and have the seven figure business. Um, so you, you're welcome to get the book of, if you're, this book is really good for someone who is at the beginning uh, of their, their business. And it's more, I think more the basic stuff that I was doing, but now that I know more and I'm about to celebrate 10 years in business uh, this May, I kind of have a different perspective of what I would advise, um, I guess the old version of me uh, because often the, the, the education that we give to other people is the education that we would have loved to have received when we were starting out. So just a bit of a background story of uh, my story of why I got into business is uh, um, my husband lost a third chair franchise in May, uh, sorry, March 2010, which was the defining moment in our family where I thought, oh my God, this stuff only happens in the movies. And, um, and basically I went to become a life coach, uh, thinking I was going to help other people. Yet the whole point of being, becoming a life coach was to help myself first. Uh, but I got sold on the advertising, um, that, um, six figures income part-time hours. That's what the school, like when I was looking to become a life coach, marketing said six figures income part-time hours. And I go, I want that. I'm like desperate. I need to figure this out. And I thought, I proclaimed that I was going to have this six figure business in the following six months. It was like May I joined and by Christmas that year, uh, little did I know it was going to take a lot longer than that. And that I would only generate $7,000 in those first 12 months. Um, and now I know that the reason it took a lot more effort to get the rocket off the ground and get it to pass six figures, which took a couple of years, um, and that's not long in any stretch because I, I 
take a lot of action. So most most people who know me, um, I do a lot of things and I'm really focused and I do like the extra 5 million percent that um, that normal people maybe won't be able to do so, so or bothered to do. So therefore, why I got to where I got to, but I know people have done it faster, but I know some people will take slower. But what I've realized is that to build a seven figure business, why it doesn't happen so quickly um, and it'll take at least a few years, if not three to five years, is because you need to build infrastructure around it and actually discover who the hell you are, right? You start out in business and you think you're one thing and then you take action towards that one thing and then all of a sudden you come to realize maybe this is not the thing or maybe I'm not clearer here. When I used to sell myself as a life coach, and what the hell is life coaching, right? Um, you know, people don't buy coaching. People buy a solution to a problem, right? And uh, please comment if you agree um, with what I'm saying. But yeah, they buy the so solution to a problem. And I didn't get that. Coaching is actually a tool. It's not the business. So until I figured that out, the seven or eight months went by. But the one thing that I certainly focused on which this intertwines in some of the other outcomes. So I might go back and forward through the three outcomes that I'm sharing tonight. But one big tip that I was given to me at my first training as a coach was in order for us to find clients, we need to get out there and network twice a week and become a member of a couple of groups and a community and turn up and get to know each other, um, get to know people and um, they'll get to know you and see how you can help people. And so by networking twice a week, which I made it my golden rule of thumb um, and becoming a member of a BNI uh, Business Networking International and a couple of other groups that were around back then, it was Heartlink or All Women's Networking and all this sort of stuff. Um, you know, I just kept getting up and saying what I was and what I was and every week I would tweak it and adjust it. And uh, so I believe to discover what your thing is, um, externalizing what you do and then refining on that is really helpful. And for me, I finally arrived that I was going to do weight loss coaching. And from there on in, I wrote the first book, The Seven Ultimate Secrets to Weight Loss, which I believe that if I tried all of these different marketing strategies, which didn't really bring many leads or clients into my business, maybe having a book would make me stand out and get me noticed. So I did bring that book out the first, uh, at month 13. And because I had networked twice a week for the previous 13 months and I had attended over 100 networking events, a few people knew me around Melbourne. So therefore, when the book came out and I went out and was representing myself with the book, that's the thing that actually got me noticed and got me speaking gigs and people inquiring further to collaborate and get me to speaking like in chiropractic centers, at nutritionists, at personal training studio, and as, you know, in front of all of their clients, which were my ideal clients. And that's how I got to the first six figures of one-on-one um, -on -one coaching, if you like. Now to scale to seven figures, there needs to be a lot more. And there needs to be something that um, can be um, delivered to clients repetitively in a systematic or a, a systematic way. And this is where I'm going to talk about a signature system. Okay. Now your signature system may not be obvious again in the first, it took me three and a half years um, to get to my signature system of ultimate 48 hour author. And now for the last seven years, I've been fine tuning it and refining it and all that sort of stuff. Um, but really building a high-end program that delivers a very specific outcome and ch throwing so much value into it and having a start point and an end point is really essential. So a lot of mistakes that I see business owners make is that they sell a lot of fluff. Like there's no outcome. It's just kind of like, uh, well, I'm a life coach or I'm a consultant and I work on your um happiness you know i'll make you happier or i'll make you more aligned or fulfilled like what the hell does that even mean right um so looking at where pe people's pain points are is really crucial to discovering how to solve a problem and solving a problem and advertising and marketing and selling it is really essential to come from the standpoint of what do what is the, the thing that pe keeps people awake at night and what does their ego want 
like my ego wanted six figures income part-time hours when I joined this coaching school. But when I got in, which is that's how you get, you get them in by selling the magic bullet by, um, uh, by, uh, you know, pr having a big promise, right? Like ultimate 40 hour author is a big promise, right? Um, so when I, um, when I put that promise up, yes, that's the hook, but people, when they start working with me, they get a whole hell of a lot more work to do than 48 hours, right? In order to leverage and all that. For me as a, a new coach, I had to learn how to sell myself, how to market, how to write copy, how to create uh, my own website in the early days when you don't have money to outsource things like that. And I didn't realize what I had signed up for until it was too late. And I was like, shit, I gotta do this stuff if I'm gonna monetize the business. So Gary, what do you think? How are we going so far? Oh yeah, great, Nat. Um, one of the first things that I ever learned off you uh, you know, years ago at a, as a, at a presentation was about um, people don't buy stuff. Well, they buy stuff, but what you ran down our throats was that people buy systems and, yeah. um, and outcomes as well. And that, that really made me transform my own business um, mm -hmm. because I found it really hard to sell marketing services because but people don't necessarily know the outcome. And yeah. uh, as soon as I started selling um, videos as a product, it yeah. totally changed my business yeah. because it's a, it's a smaller kind of product. It's, it's something that you can do in a week and it's done and you can start seeing yeah. results straight away. So, um, yeah, for me... Now, having a start point and a finish point is essential in your signature system. Yeah. Like having something open-ended... It's a bit like people are worried about that. They're not going to go, oh my God, this doesn't have a finishing point. Like I want to get on with my life. I want to achieve the next thing or whatever it is. So you're absolutely right because marketing is actually a big highway. So what's your lane in it and therefore what you had chosen was video within marketing. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, and for me, like I, in reality, I am a business coach. But I'm not going to promote myself as a business coach and consultant. Yeah. My highway might be business coaching, but my lane is leverage your business and build it through your business card of steroids, which is your book. Yeah. 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 So guys, sell to the ego, give to the soul is the key of marketing. So, or another way said, sell them what they want, give them what they need. What they need is the, all the hard, too hard basket kind of stuff and, um, and all of the steps you're going to teach them, all the fluff as well, right? But that, what they want is a hard course up to finish outcome. So it's really, really important, you know, if you sell yourself, you sell, sell a system and then refine upon that system, make it better, make it faster, make it more uh, deeply um, like go deep in terms of how organized you are with it. I know first time I ran a retreat and last weekend was number 28 and we only do four a year. I mean, over seven years, these like they're chalk and peas when you compare them even year to year. Um, and Julie is on the call now. She'll be crewing at the following one um, and she'll probably think, oh my God, this is so different from the time when I attended. So um, another thing for infrastructure behind a seven-figure business is your branding. Um, it is really important that, um, you know, when you find something that works, that you stick with it and that you also update it. So our branding um, has changed. Um, I, I, no, you can't see it on the top of my banner here in the background. But um, we updated it. We made it more modern, more up to date and aligned it with the things we were doing. But keeping it, keeping it consistent because people start to recognize it. The more you show up, the more you market yourself, the more you... Um, represent yourself as a particular brand people just like link you up and if i say my business um, when i walk into different places um nowadays people go oh my god i've seen your ads on facebook oh yeah even when i was staying in sydney at an airbnb of all places i walked in and the person we're having a chit chat and she said to me what do you do and i was running an event in sydney and i said oh my god i love the thing she ended up becoming a client a few months later and she was my airbnb hostess and she had recognized the branding and the very third thing is um very much credibility behind um you know the infrastructure around the seven figure business must uh, have and continue to build on the credibility and credibility comes about from having um you know books 
uh, you representing yourself as a speaker being uh, in the media. So if you are the face of your business, you have to do all of those things that are going to uh, make you stand out and make you get noticed because that's where the opportunities and your rock star profile starts being, being built. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, so many great takeaways already, Nat. What else you got for us? <laughs> you writing? Are you writing notes down there? You better I, be writing notes. I have okay. been writing some notes. Yes. Yeah, and if also anyone that's on the call, please write any comments in the chat box or on your Facebook um, stream so I can answer stuff because I, I will just keep talking about, uh, in terms of what I think you should know. Uh, but if you want to know something more specific, go for it. You've got probably another 20 minutes of me here. All right, let's go to the second point, and that is marketing to keep your sales pipeline full. And I'm a big believer that um, having... A, a strategy as well as being very consistent with what you do um, is essential. Um, and if anything, anyone who says and has observed this 10 year journey of mine, they say, Nat, you're just so freaking consistent. <laughs> you know, the last five years I've been doing my own live uh, on a Monday morning, right? On my personal profile. Well, that's been going on for over five years. Like, you know, I, I do take some Mondays off when I'm on holidays or traveling, you know, uh, but I'm literally there like 90% of the time. And, you know, with my clients, you know, they, they get, my high-end clients get lifetime access with me, which means, you know, they turn up year after year and we're continuously still there for them. So that's really, really essential. But networking um, and hosting my own events have been the two core strategies to how I have built this to seven figures and beyond. Uh, it's multiple seven figures now, right? So um, I believe you can build a multiple six figure business on purely organic strategies. And that's how I did it. My early days, my first four years, I did not spend a cent in Facebook advertising. You didn't know about the opportunities there. I basically spent money to get, go to lunches, breakfasts, um, all that kind of stuff and um, put my own events on while hustling really hard to get bums on seats because I wasn't doing Facebook ads. So literally I would get bums on seats while networking, while being really active on social media and just organically uh, posting on social media. And through just building relationships and trust, um, I grew it to a multiple six figure business without any paid ads. Um, after that, I was told by my, um, my mentor at the time, he said, look, if you really want to scale this to seven figures, we need to tap into some, uh, Facebook ads and do some paid advertising because in order to scale to seven, uh, seven figures, you need the more volume and you need to keep meeting people who've never heard of you from a bar of soap. Yeah. And that's when we kind of took the plunge into the world of Facebook ads. And, and nowadays we spend $150,000 on Facebook ads, inclusive of our uh, person that manages our accounts. Uh, but when you know when you're doing it in a calculated way, it's a very calculated risk that has huge rewards. And, um, you know, for every dollar I give them, you know, we pull out 14 to $15 back. So, um, really you know, it, yeah, you got to know your conversion rates. Please don't do Facebook ads unless in the early days you're ready to part with 10 grand and you absolutely won't be, dis uh, you know, uh, crushed. Uh, for, for doing that because there's a lot of testing and measuring and there's a lot of things that um, you need to figure out and be patient with in order for it to really take off. And there'll be times when we might slow down and there's times of, like this year it's just gone crazy nuts, like, you know, five times better than we expected. So, um, you know, but that's also that repetition of continuous and consistently advertising and marketing that makes you, you know, that brand that, that is here to stay. And, um, and that credibility building also gives people, I guess, signals or signs that, hey, if, they, if I'm constantly seeing these guys, they would be crazy to be paying uh, Facebook money uh, unless they're actually running a successful business, right? So um, networking as an organic and very free or low cost strategy is how I kept my pipeline marketing uh, the marketing that I do to keep my sales pipeline full. Constantly, every meeting, I would meet potential collaborative partners or maybe I would stumble upon someone who was interested in what I was doing. But mostly what I'd go, when I network, I go to look for people who advise my ideal client. I'm not going to look for 
my clients there. I'm looking for people who advise my ideal client because that's the best way and the most leveraged way to make the most out of your networking is to get connected with them. Uh, truckloads of your ideal clients rather than oh are you my client and, yes. and I also treat it as um, building friendships so when I go to a networking event I'm going to a couple next week which I don't get to go to I basically I just go and uh, go what new friends am I going to make today that's my mindset what new friends am I going to make today because friends do business with friends and are more willing to help each other out and all that sort of stuff and that's how I treat it and I don't have that uh, sense of something has to happen, um, you know, and I, I guess it's hard, easier, easier said than done for someone who's just starting out and perhaps really needs to generate business. Um, but if you can step into that mindset of not having any intention and but being committed there and being 100% present and listening to people, that's really, really um, going to propel you forward than the sense or the smell of desperation. Um, next one, so at my own events, as I said, speaking is another thing that I used to look out for a lot because when you're a speaker at a networking event, it is, um, it is the power position you're in. So even though that event, all the people there may not be ideally interested in what you do, um, what's really cool is that if you're the speaker, then people who are interested in what you do, they'll come and find you after you've spoken and have a conversation with you. And this is another way I used to generate more bums on seats in my events because I would offer like a, a special prize to my half day event and then people would come along and, um, and um, you know, buy that ticket at the speaking gig and come along to the following event and then eventually some of them into clients. Um, and then of course the most um, leverageable and scalable way to keep your sales pipeline full is to obviously um, move towards um, it's only now streaming on Facebook. I can see that. I it, it didn't work earlier. So, yeah. I yeah, we need, yeah, I can see because it's, um, obviously it needs to flash and do all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. We're recording anyway, aren't we? Yeah, we're recording. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sounds good. Awesome. So then Facebook ads and organic social media, um, you know, are the last two, you know, of where and how I have... Um, uh, scale this because to be yeah to, to be a seven figure business you, you can't purely just do it on um you know organic stuff we can only build so many relationships being one human being you know that has only limited amount of time and hours um so really we need to have a mark built system marketing and infrastructure machine behind it all that is generating all of that so because then you're gonna get um get into the position where you're gonna have to uh, be the sales, I guess, um, uh, person because you're the face of the business. So at the moment, my business, my role in my business is really sales and, you know, obviously delivery of my training. So I don't do event coordination. I don't run the Facebook ads. My husband's the marketing guru within the business. I've got a customer service PA and a publications coordinator and my VA is my event coordinator. So realistically, I'm just the face of the business and, uh, traveling and doing the events and certainly part of the selling not all of the selling because every single person in our team sells um, of course I'm the most effective because people are buying me at the end of the day but my husband sells my PA sells and does follow-up calls my VA does uh, social media promoting where she sells half day tickets and all that kind of stuff yeah. so those are the things do the offline stuff in the early days and then certainly when you can reinvest in your business, do the uh, paid advertising and, um, and get the scalability to, to, to get it towards seven figures. Um, and the last point that I wanted to cover off is um, sales mastery. Okay, so we're moving from marketing now to sales. And of course, sales are the bloodline of any business. If we don't uh, have regular sales, of course, um, you know, things can slowly implode. So we need to spend just as much time on that as we do, if not the most time. And as you um, monetize your business, please, please, whatever you do, outsource sales, the very last thing that you outsource. So you'll outsource your admin if it's event coordination, maybe some of your organic social media posting, uh, your bookkeeping, your customer service, those things are the first things to go. 
then maybe your marketing, because you might hire someone who will take care of your marketing, which we have someone, but my husband also spends 20 hours on top of that, making sure he's a great asset to the team so that he can observe and know what they're doing. So we don't want to like kind of just give it to someone and go, you know what you're doing. I'll just leave it in your hands. We like to take responsibility. Um, and then of course, the last thing is sales that you would ever outsource. So that's why I'm saying, whatever, as you're scaling, you must reinvest in your business and give it to uh, give it some jobs to other people. So you can do the thing that's going to keep your business um, profitable and scaling further and, um, and building up, you know, year after year. So I'm a big believer that um, there's two types of sales um, uh, personalities. There's the push and the pull. Okay. And we know the pushy people are very aggressive. Um, well, they don't even have to be aggressive, but you feel like, oh my God, I've said no 10 times and you won't leave me alone. Or they might have some strategies where they might make you really feel bad about yourself because you haven't made a decision or whatever it is. I've been always of the mindset that, um, you know, we can uh, pull and seed towards a sale. So seeding is selling without selling. Um, you, need, you can drop hints about what you do. Uh, I mean, I've probably done it uh, 10 or 15 times this call without saying, come and buy my stuff, you know, just by talking about excitedly about what I do and what my life is about, I'm seeding. And that's what I say to people. If you're passionate about what you do, you don't need to have a call to action. If you just tell people what you do, you can just, you know, if they hear it and they're interested in that, they'll you look you up and they'll contact you. And so I'm a big believer of the, you know, just tell people excitedly about how, what you do and where you're going, what like, kind of things are happening for you in your life. And um, they'll want to ask more information if they're interested. The seating and then the pool type of selling is um, by adding so much value that people are kind of going, I've been following you. I've been watching these lives because so many young people go, they've come to my Monday morning live so many times. Um, and they go, I've been on them for three years or whatever. And I just really enjoy watching you now. And now I'm ready. Like, you know, the time has come for me to write a book or whatever. And then you kind of go, wow, all that effort. So the biggest thing is, um, and I'll give you a little stat that I don't know if you're aware of, but one of my fellow um, entrepreneur buddies, he said, you know, it takes 10 to 12 hours of content consumption before someone is ready to buy from you. Yeah. Okay, 10 to 12 hours of content consumption. So how are you delivering that content? Because to create a sale, you need to have built a relationship and trust and expert status and credibility and all that. So that's where the question to the listeners is, you know, what kind of videos are you putting out? What kind of webinars are you on? You know, why would I come on a webinar like, you know, at eight o'clock at night in the middle of Survivor? Of course, because I have the time these two or three weeks and why not do those extra, you know, bits and pieces I don't get to do now as much but it continues to build on my content and my hours with the people that are listening, following. I mean, I've got two or three of my clients on this call, you know, le continuing to learn from me. And then when that time adds up and people are ready, they just kind of, you kind of think, where did this, this person come from? That was an easy sale. No, it wasn't because I've been putting out videos, podcasts, um, whether they've seen me speak uh, on a webinar or in real life, or they've come to my half day workshop or, you know, whatever it is, there's just so many things that after 10 years are out there in terms of content I've created. So that's one of the best ways is building goodwill marketing. So when we, when we want to sell, you know, if you spend more time doing the free things um, that actually you're not getting paid for in the moment, they will turn, trust me, into dollars if the stuff that you're delivering is consistent and you are doing it over um, a period of time. So um, the last thing I'm going to tell you guys about sales, get used to uh, hearing a lot of no's. Um, even at the point where you're a seven figure or a multiple seven figure business um, as we are now, we're hearing at least one or two no's, to, uh, sorry, one or two yeses to every 10 no's. Yeah. So it's still the no's outweigh the yeses. Yeah. So yeah. you're still going to just get used to rejection and people like not progressing, even though you thought they were going to become a client and whatever it is. Um, but give yourself the opportunity to get told no, because if you don't get enough no's, you're never going to monetize and actually convert some of the people who are meant for be a, a perfect match for you into those yeses. And that's the thing that I see the most is people 
don't give themselves enough of an opportunity to even have a sales conversation to get a no from yeah. someone. Yeah, well, so, no means next order, doesn't it? Next offer, next person, yeah. move on. So Yeah, yeah <laughs> just... just you want to have the nose. So you're getting, like, if your conversion rate's one in 10, it's one step closer to um, yep. being safe. Exactly, yeah. So thank you, Natasha, for saying good yeah. advice. Yeah, I just think, um, yeah, people are too scared of rejection. And I, um, you know, I, uh, you know, it can be disheartening. Sometimes I might get hit up so many no's. Like last year, you guys, we, we were on this um, tour. We did four events in four days, which we never do in a week. The maximum would be three. We worked so hard. We saw we were in front of 150 people. And I don't know if something was in the air, but so much effort, money, and promotion went into that particular tour. And it was it was just all over the place. We hardly made any sales, or we made teeny tiny ones that definitely didn't make make the tour worthwhile. And I was feeling really down even at that this point in business where really the so what if that happened we know that it things turn around you can actually really get down on yourself and go what's wrong with me what did i say differently what did i do differently that you know 150 people almost rejected me but then a month later we went and did another three day in three uh, three events in three days and we almost surpassed what we should have converted over those seven events like in three events we converted what we would have been happy to convert in 10 events yeah. So something about sales is there's going to be periods where it's just like everyone seems like is saying yes to you, but there's going to be periods where it, it may seem like there's just nothing and maybe you're not doing anything wrong. Um, but we always stop and examine with Stuart, what do we say? What can we do differently? Why was this outcome? And it's really from those painful moments that we actually become better. And then we did tweak a couple of things for that following tour. Let's, I said, let's focus on this. Maybe we give them too many choices. Maybe that got them confused and they didn't just, uh, too much choice. A confused mind always says no. Um, that's a big, big, big uh, insight around sales. A confused mind will always say no. So that's what I've got for you tonight, Jerry. You asked me any couple of questions and if the audience has anything that I can impart on them because I know you guys are, um, you know, on a time limit. Huh. And uh, we know you need to get back to Survivor. The poor kids oh, no. are sitting there with the pause TV for 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, mm. um, I, I, I just want to thank you because that was, it was just, you know, fabulous um, content as always. Um, I think my biggest takeaway and probably I can't speak for anyone else, but um, is really thinking about how you can, sell a system basically how can i turn my product and offering and service into a system because mm -hmm. you know like you said and you learned this in the weight loss industry is that yeah. people will buy into a system like jenny craig like you know how many people find yeah. jenny craig and weight watchers because they've got a system um and um yeah you you, you just think about all the other businesses out there that yeah. um that are successful uh, that how yeah, can you model them? Yeah. How yeah. can they, how come they've been around for so long? You know, just ask yourself that question, and then see. And everything they do is rinse and repeat, yeah. rinse and repeat, and improve upon. Of course, keep yeah. getting better. Yeah. But it's just, and I can tell you, like the seven years, that's all I've been doing is rinse and repeat. Of course, improving and getting better, and as a result, increasing the revenue every single year. There's no year that we've gone backwards or plateaued. It's better, better, stronger, new ideas, more systems, more people. And um, yeah, it's just, um, it, it's really rewarding because you know you're making an impact and difference. I yeah. just pasted in my notes from my, um, from my iPhone, uh, from my notes um, where I was like creating it before, just as a summary for the guys. Thank you. And Gavin says, um, thank you. I can see that. Um, yeah. yeah. So I guess that's just the big thing. Everyone think about how you, what, what you can systemize, how you can systemize, sell, sell that system um, because that, that really is what people buy. They buy outcomes, they buy systems, yeah. they, yeah. They, they, um, they want results, they want tangible stuff, you know, and that's what's yeah. so great about books and things like that is that they know, <laughs> they know yeah. they're going to get something tangible at, at the, the end, end of it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So, I'm going to leave you guys with a quote that I signed the book, the book, the official book of um, this webinar's title, 
but whenever I sign every book, I, um, I write a little quote almost or like a saying or whatever it is. And the quote that I actually write, and I don't know who said it, so don't repeat me, uh, uh, like, you know, it's not mine. Sometimes yeah. I do write my own and sometimes obviously it's someone else's. But before I sign the book, I write in this one, success is the sum of small repeated efforts day in and day out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So success is the sum of small repeated efforts day in and day out and then I sign my name and I date it. <laughs> yeah, and if there's anything that you are now, it's consistent. Um, yeah. And I think that's um, that's probably one of your biz- biggest success. I think you even said to um, to me at an event once, you know, you, you said to everyone that, um, you know, never give up, never cancel an event, even if, never one, person, an event. if no. one person is turning up to that yeah. event, well, good on lucky them they're getting one-on-one time with you for an event price so um you know i've said that to many people since they're like oh we should cancel i'm like no no you, you never cancel nat denman yeah. says this you never cancel even if we went to canberra two years ago in canberra we happened to accidentally pick our event date as the first day of school and we literally had two people and this is when our business is very successful right we're getting 30 people in rooms and we like had two or three people booked so i got a couple of people um that were like i know in canberra to come and be extra bums on seat and then my husband sat in the audience and i had like a, a u-shaped table of six people and i just did it and um one person signed up to my 20 grand program and i was like okay well that was worth it because yeah. sometimes you'll get a room of 30 and you might only sign up once. So I say you never underestimate the size of the group because with smaller groups, you can connect a lot better. And I often have higher conversion rates in smaller rooms. And this is why we also cut off our numbers now at about 40 uh, because we don't want anyone. We can sell up to 100 people rooms, but we don't want to because it, we drop significantly in results. So there's no point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, you know, know, at the end of the day, those even if there's four people in a room, they, they're usually meant to be there and you usually yeah. have some kind of gel with them all anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. cool. Well, you're welcome, Jules. Julie's saying that you always keep me focused teaching you tools. Thank you. And thank you, Carol and Natasha. Natasha. So, um, Natasha. Thank you for having me. Uh, and um, have an awesome night and good luck with all these Monday morning um, calls, guys. Um, it's a great way if you can lock in something that's regular on your schedule to keep learning but then don't just learn go out there now it's perfect perfect timing by the way jerry monday night you learn some new tools tuesday you get out there you've got the rest of the week to put some stuff into action right exactly exactly oh. and um as a um committee we actually meet on a tuesday morning and have a yeah. bit of debrief on monday night but yeah. um yeah we like our monday night learning and yeah. Just thanks heaps for um, joining us and we look forward to your um, continued involvement in the group in the future and tips and tricks um, from you and um, let us know how your um, travels are going um, in America as well. It'll be amazing. Thank you. And I love the nail polish. I'm purple and you're blue and we're all nice and bright. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I know. Well, I don't have the purple top. <laughs> I love it. All right, guys. Have an awesome night and uh, go smash it out for the rest of this week. Talk soon. All right. Bye. Thanks, Matt. See ya. Bye. Bye. Yeah. I'm going to hit record again. Um, thank you to everyone that joined on the call tonight. And if you're not in our community, um, just make sure that you join the group at fit.ly slash all for one community. That's the number four uh, because we're all about. Um, just giving, giving great content, um, finding, finding great people like Nat. And we just, we just want you to um, thrive in your business. And, uh, you know, we hope that you can be a contributor yourself one day on a call like tonight. It's pretty casual. And um, we don't do any sales pitches or anything like that. We just want people to share their knowledge. So if you've got something to share with us, let us know. There is a... Um, a live spreadsheet going and um, you can put your name down and have a bit of a, a chat with me or someone else on the phone about just the requirements around presenting and what we'd like from you in return, which is just support in the group pretty much and um, support on one of these calls and everything like that. So have a great night and a great week in business, everyone. Um, 
over and out from the All For One team. We'll hope to see you on another call next week. I don't know who's speaking next week. Can't think. So <laughs> have a great night. Bye, everyone.